Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem alternating groups too. If I'm being 100% honest, this is one of those problems where it took me most of the time to like just understand exactly what it's asking for. I think it took me like five minutes, honestly, to understand exactly what it was asking for. And then I took about like two minutes to code up the solution. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. The idea is that we are given an input array. They call it colors, but you really don't really need all that context. It doesn't really change the problem. So suppose the input is like this, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0. So the nature of this array is that it's supposed to be circular. So technically, the last element and the first element are adjacent. We're also given another parameter, k. I believe k is always going to be less than or equal to the size of the input array. In this example, it's going to be 3. And that's because we want to look at subarrays of size k. So before even getting into what this problem is asking for, how many subarrays of size k would there even be? I mean, obviously, there's that one. And then there's this one. And then there's this one. So now you might think we're done, but don't forget that the nature of the array is that it is circular. I don't know if this uh, picture over here is going to help you. It doesn't really help me that much. I think, honestly, just sticking with the array is a little bit easier. So like this would actually be another subarray, like this and that. And then another one would be this. And then these come after that. And then that's pretty much it, because then if we start over, then we kind of just get this, which is something we already saw before. And now among all of those subarrays, we want to count how many of them are alternating. So if you look at this first one here, it's 0, 1, 0. All the values are alternating. OK, great. Look at the next subarray, all of them, 1, 0, 1. They're all alternating. The next one, 0, 1, 0, those are alternating. So, so far we've counted three. So if our result was keeping track of the count, so far we have three. Now let's look at this one, which is, if I were to draw it out, 1, 0, and then this one over here, which is 0. They are not alternating. These two adjacent elements are the same. Okay, and then one more is going to be this, 0, and then these next two, 0 and 1. Again, not alternating. So this one also doesn't count. And that's pretty much it. Now we are done. So the result for the first example is going to be three. Okay, so now we know what exactly we're trying to do. We kind of just saw like one way to solve this without necessarily knowing all the implementation details. That brute force simulation that I kind of ran, in the worst case, it'd be n times k because we're going to have n different subarrays. Each is going to be of size k. We can kind of verify if they're alternating or not by like scanning through it. And so that's one way to solve the problem. And the optimization, I guess I'll just tell you, because to be honest, in my mind, it's so trivial. I'll show you the intuition of how you can like derive it or like think about it. But it's it's just the sliding window. It's a very kind of common pattern. It's something I've talked about a lot on this channel, talked about a lot on Neatcode.io, many courses and lessons for it on Neatcode.io if you're interested. But using that and also using a little trick for dealing with circular arrays, we are going to be able to solve this problem pretty dang easily. So let me show you that. So sometimes when dealing with circular arrays, I like to, or like a common trick is just to take the original array and then concatenate it to itself. So if this was the original array and we concatenate it with itself, the main reason to do that would be because then you can do something like this. If uh, this is just the entire array and then we take that entire array and just copy it. So now we uh, have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is like the copy of the array. I'm just going to kind of make this cleaner. This would be a technique to deal with like the circular nature. This is not trying to like optimize the solution. It's just dealing with like the circular nature of it. Then we could just get every single window of size 3, right? Well, this would be the first window. It's a valid window. Next window, valid. Next window, valid. Next window, it's valid next window it's valid but after that the next window from here we would just be repeating the window that we already saw over here there's no need to repeat the window every window before that was not repeating because like we had the window that's starting here going up till here then we had this window 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 
None of these were repeating, but this one would be. So we can't easily just do that, just concatenate the array. I guess you could, but then you'd have to know like where the stopping point is. And also, if we were to do that, we would have to create a new array. And it's actually possible to not create the new array. So how many times are we going to iterate past uh, the ending point? Well, this is the window we would not want to include. So basically, it's going to be k minus 1. Those are like the extra elements we want to sort of add to the end of here. So like, just forget everything past this. We just want to take the first k minus 1 elements and sort of put them over there. But we don't even have to put them over there. We can do something even more clever. We can have our i pointer. Normally, we'd want to go from the beginning up until the end here. But now we're going to actually say, OK, iterate k minus 1 extra time. So we iterate through the input, and then we iterate over this little gap over here. That's going to be k minus 1 elements long. And we can access these elements because we know these elements are the same ones that are over here anyway. And we can do that without having to copy them there by doing this. Like, what if my eye pointer goes out of bounds? That's probably what you're worried of, right? If I had my eye pointer over here and I'm trying to index the original array, well, I'm going to get an index out of bounds error. But why not do something like this? Take nums and whatever i happens to be, even if it's out of bounds, take it, mod it, by uh, uppercase n, where let's say uppercase n is the length of the input. That's uh, this section, uh, uppercase n. This section is k minus 1 long. So then if I mod it by uppercase n, well then uh, this is going to bring me back over here. This is going to bring me back over there. So I don't have to put these elements there to know what they are. It's going to be 0 and 1. So that's a little technique I'm going to use to deal with the circular nature. And now we kind of know what the stopping point is going to be as well. OK, now for the optimization, for the fact that we don't have to go through each of these windows. We don't have to go through the entire window every single time because this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little sliding window optimization. I'm going to cut down on the repeated work because I can do this. First, I'm going to have two pointers. I'm going to have my left pointer, and I'm going to have my right pointer after that. I'm going to compare these two elements. I'm going to see that they are different. That's good. So I'm going to now expand my window. I'm going to move my right pointer to be over here. The right pointer is still different than the previous element. That's good because we want these values to be alternating. That's all we care about. We only have to compare the newest element that we added with the previous one because we assume everything else is alternating. OK, and then our right pointer is over here. Now, when our window is of size k, since r minus left plus 1, that tells us the size of the window, it's equal to k, then we know we have an alternating window. We can increment our result by 1. So if I'm keeping track of my result, I will now set it to be 1. So now I'm going to shift my right pointer one more time. I'm over here. Great, it's still alternating. But right now, my window is actually too big. So what do I do? Well, as soon as it becomes too big, we will just shift the left pointer by one. That will ensure that once we shift the left pointer, now our window is exactly the size that we want it to be. It is of size k, and the window is valid. That's great. OK, so now we just kind of keep going. We found that this is a valid window. We increment uh, the result by one. Now it's going to be two. I'm going to take my right pointer, shift it again. It's going to be over here. Compare it to the previous element, still alternating. Shift the left pointer by one since the window is too big. It's of size k now. Great. Found another valid window. Increment the result by one. Now we're at three. Once again, shift the right pointer. This is where things are going to get interesting. Shift the right pointer over here. Compare this element which is going to be nums of i, since it's out of bounds, we are still going to mod by uppercase n. We're always actually going to be modding by uppercase n. If we were in bounds, that uppercase n, like modding math, wouldn't really do anything. When we're out of bounds, it'll bring us back in bounds. But anyways, we will compare this element with the previous one, and now they're the same. So now think about what we do. If you're not familiar with the sliding window, you might not know what to do at this point, but Basically, we're going to slide the window. We're going to say the left pointer 
has to be shifted because if these two adjacent elements are equal, by including both of these in the same window, we will never have an alternating window. We'll never have alternating elements. So we cannot include both of these values. So we're gonna take our left pointer and shift it all the way to where we are currently. Right now our window is too small. Technically this window of size one is alternating, but it's too small. So we can't really update the result. Uh, now we will shift the right pointer again. The right pointer will be over here. These are technically alternating, but this is the stopping point. We don't really go any further than that because at that point we'd be repeating a window that we've already seen over here. So that's the idea behind this solution. We can get it to be a linear time solution and constant space. If you're new to the sliding window pattern, highly recommend checking out Neatcode.io, but let's code this up now. Okay, so I'm gonna get the length of the input and store it in a variable because we're gonna need it to do that mod math. I'm gonna have my left pointer initialize it to zero. I'm gonna have my result, which is what we are going to return. Sorry, I can't type today um, over there. And then I'm gonna have my right pointer just initialized in the for loop. And I'm not gonna start it at zero. I'm gonna start it at one so we can compare it with the previous element. And we're gonna go not up until n, but to n we're gonna add k minus one. And you could just write it like this to keep it simple. And so now we're going to uh, do that comparison. We want these to be alternating. So we're gonna check if colors at index r is equal to colors at r minus one. If that's the case, they're not alternating, and then we shift the left pointer to be equal to the right pointer. Otherwise, we wouldn't do anything. So that's why I'm not putting the case where they're not equal, because if they're not equal, we don't really have to do anything. We just expanded our window. But if they're equal, then we shift. And also, don't forget the math to mod this by um, n and to mod this index by n as well. Okay, after that, the main thing we're looking for is if r minus l plus one, that's the size of the window. If that's exactly equal to k, then we know that we always make sure that the window is alternating. If it's not alternating, then we shrink the window. But if uh, the window is of size k, we assume it's alternating, so then we can increment the result. Of course, the window could become greater than k as well. At that point, we would then increment our left pointer. So right before we check this, let's do this. Right minus left plus one. If it's greater than k, then just shrink it by one. And because of that, the window will never be greater than k by more than one. So as soon as we increment the left pointer, then the size should be equal to k at that point. So that's the entire solution. I'm gonna run it for you. And you can see here, it works, it's pretty efficient. I promise you that this is pretty much as efficient as you can get. I mean, let's take a look at this person's solution who got a slightly better runtime by like 40 milliseconds, and let's see what their solution is. And yeah, it looks like it's uh, pretty much the exact same in terms of like time complexity. If anything, it looks like it's even less efficient, the fact that they're updating the input array. And it, it kind of looks like this is GPT generated, to be honest. And speaking of GPT generated, I mean, have you guys been looking at these editorials recently? I mean, somebody tell me that these are not GPT generated. First of all, like there's no space between these. Like it's hard to believe that like a human wrote this, but I mean, look at these God awful solutions. They're just way more complicated than they need to be. If a human is writing these, I mean, that human should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, look at this, like, like this is the best that they could do to get this to be a constant time solution and this one pass solution. I mean, uh, look at this. Like, I guess this one's not too bad, but still, I feel like my solution uh, is pretty preferable. I mean, this is very, very simple stuff. But anyways, this is linear time. I guess you could say that the time complexity is uh, n plus k, but I mean, k is going to be less than n anyway. So I feel like saying it's O of n is also pretty accurate. It is a constant space solution. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.